I found a dead girl when I was 12. Reddit. What are your unforgettably creepy moments? When I was 13 me and my friends were hanging around town like usual. We went to the park first in the morning. We saw a man who looked to be in his 40s. He was wearing a hood and he had a long beard. He had a can of beer and got up and started walking towards us so we ran. Later on we were taking a shortcut through the library's car park to go to McDonald's and we saw the same guy standing by some bushes staring directly at us. Two of my friends, girls, started dancing for some reason. They hadn't seen him. It was only me that saw him. I told my best friend Walter and we tried to get everyone else to hurry up. Walter turned around to check everyone and saw the guy in the bushes now. His flies were undone and his dick was hanging out. We ran as fast as we could. We didn't see him any more times after that. When I was 7 years old. My parents were going through a very tough time. They decided to split up for a while because my mom was going through a crazy partying phase. She got custody. I was too young to understand what was going on. But I hated my father, we're best friends now and my parents have been back together for years. My mom was just too young when they first got together and she had my sister. One night when my mother went out drinking with friends. She left me home with my 12 year old sister. We lived in an extremely bad neighborhood apartment complex that was full of miscellaneous crime. I was playing Warlock on Sega Genesis when I start hearing yelling outside. We had a double glass door facing the porch area that connected the apartments. We got up to look out the window and saw a white police officer talking to a black man. The black man pulls out a bag of something and eats it. The cop instantly takes his baton and hits him across the face. It knocked the guy to the ground and the cop gets down and starts bashing his skull into the concrete. After a minute or so. The cop stops and calls in for an ambulance. He killed that man for swallowing a bag of an illicit substance. My sister was on the local news the next day explaining what happened. But no one believed us. Even though there was blood all over the concrete. The officer claimed he choked to death after swallowing the bag. It's one reason why I will never trust police officers that I don't know on a personal level. When I was 18 and invincible. I drove down to local place where teenagers and creepers hung out with a couple of my friends. A few minutes into the ride. One of my friends gets a call to pick some dude up to go as well. But they were arguing about it not being safe for him. He was also young and invincible. So he persuaded her to let him come. And I picked him up. In the car. They started arguing again and I found out that he got some skeevy gang leader dude sister pregnant and ran out on her and he had a hit on him. I didn't take this seriously because we lived in a place with 70k people. Well. When we got there. We took a couple laps around the cruising. And he was attracting attention. So I went to park. No sooner did he get out of the car than five cars surrounded mine. A dozen or so people bolted out and beat the ever-living shit out of him with wooden and metal baseball bats. He ran around screeching. Trying to hide on the various sides of my car while we were forced back inside to witness. Within probably two minutes, it felt like days. Comma the cops came and the people with bats fled and we were just left sitting there in shock while he lay, dented, on my, also dented, car bleeding against the white paint. I have no idea if he lived or died. But they shut down cruising after that and I really dislike the sounds of bats hitting things can't watch monster movies. They always seem to want to whack people with bats. Colon. C. It was the day I realized that I'm not invincible and I needed a new set of friends. I was flying to India and we had just stopped in Germany. I was 14 and sitting next to this old guy who I though was asleep the whole time. I shack him because we landed because he was kinda laying no me. No response. I was an unaccompanied minor so when the stewardess came to get me she looked at him. Checked his pulse and then everyone was ordered to stay where they were including me. The paramedics came and declared him dead. I never knew for how long. I had never seen a dead guy up close before and was surprised at the time. I thought he would smell of something rotten when he died or would make a noise or something beforehand. To this day I always think if I had noticed earlier I could have helped him. I also had a dead guy lay on my shoulders for 8 hours. 
and I fell asleep during that flight as well so there was a good chance I used his head as a pillow while I slept. Creepy but that's life. I was driving to an out of state funeral in the early with my older sister. Early morning in late December in New England. As my sister and I drove on the nearly empty Route 95 N. We came around a corner which was a little slick with ice so we slowed down. Come to find around that corner was a huge wreck. A jeep had rolled and smashed into the guardrail. And only a few cops were there. The young man, who was 16, had been thrown from the car about 20 feet. And a blood soaked sheet covered some of the body. You could see his bloody socks and jeans. We slowed down just because of the initial shock. Then. We saw this guy, who we later learned was this kid's dad on the news, pulling his car over in the opposite side of the highway. And sprinting with this look of terror and anger and fear. Towards the body. We had stopped the car at this point so he could run past. And the cops stopped him and he just broke down screaming. We couldn't hear him because the windows were closed but it was even creepier seeing this go on silently. So we continue to drive. And then we see the kids shoes in the middle of the road. Brand new green Nikes. Sitting in the road a few feet from each other. We accidentally ran over one. And the thud sound just broke my heart. This kid was 16. Still bothers me to this day. A few weeks ago a woman was repeatedly stabbed outside my window. I won't ever forget her screams and her rattled breathing when I went out to flag down the police. I feel guilty for not doing more than calling 911. But I am also angry because I heard the police interviewing a girl. Asking if she heard anything and she had heard the screaming. She said yes but didn't call the police. How do you fucking not call the police? How horrible are you to not bother to try to help? I hope she feels guilty. The poor woman deserved better. And now she is dead and the guy hasn't been found yet. My friends and I used to climb onto the roof of my high school late at night because well. It was fun. One night my best friend and I brought two girls, whom we were crushing on, onto the roof to show them what we thought was a harmless and exciting discovery. After some time exploring as a group my friend and I thought it appropriate to go explore the rooftops alone with our respective crushes. In the distance I saw what seemed like a fitting spot to have a seat. Well it turns out it wasn't so fitting because it was a skylight. I only remember up to this point. My friend describes what happened next as the most horrifying experience of his life. After about a few minutes he came looking for me as it turned eerily silent. He approached a shattered skylight and it clicked. We were down there. He yelled and yelled until I finally muttered back a weak help I can't move. Police and paramedics were called. He never got a response from the girl. I woke up two days later with a concussion. A few broken bones. And some minor internal bleeding. My crush was diagnosed dead on impact. I'm not sure if this is even appropriate in this thread but fuck it I guess. So this was pretty weird for me. My mom used to take me and my brother to the beach every summer for a week. Well one year we're walking along the beach and we get pretty far. I was probably around 8-10 years old so it felt far to me. Whatever that's worth, to where the beach got kind of desolate. There we saw something lying in the sand. My mom just said it was a sea slug or some kind of worm from the ocean and I bought it. Well a few years later I have this distinct memory of having a sudden clarity Clarence moment and thinking to myself that was no worm. That was a penis. Yes someone had cut off a man's penis and it somehow ended up on a beach on the east coast. I used to live in a funeral home. Literally in a funeral home. My parents owned it. But we didn't have enough income to really support a home for ourselves. So we took part of the building and kind of converted it into an apartment. Due to some pretty bad planning on my parents part we had the living room like right next to the area where we kept the bodies. Which was right next to the embalming room. Basically every day I'd see a random naked dead guy or two sitting on a table right outside where I was playing. Sometimes my dad would be working in the embalming room, you know what I mean by working, and since there were pretty big windows on the door. God knows why. I would get to see almost everything. From a guy getting stabbed and having his blood let out. To the egregious stitching that would have to be done to guys coming from the morgue. 
but as Canex was getting at all this stuff isn't really that bad. I mean you don't really know any of the people that you see dead so there's no real psychological impact on you. The only scary thing is when friends of the family get sent to the funeral home. That could put a man in the mental clinic. Well. Actually ended well. But really stuck with me. This summer I was working as a nanny. My charges and I went to Bethesda pool a few times a week. One day. The older girl, 11, saw something at the bottom in the shallower end. Brought it to my attention. And when I went over to check it out. It was a little boy, maybe 6. Comma all curled up into the fetal position. When I reached him to pull him out he was completely limp in my arms and he wasn't breathing. I brought him to the side where some lifeguards, who didn't notice him even though there was no one anywhere near him obstructing the view of the bottom. And didn't even notice me yelling for them until I got to the side of the pool and lifted him up onto the concrete, gave him CPR. Called the paramedics etc. I put on a brave face for the girls but I thought he was dead for sure until later when the cops let me know he wasn't. Thankfully this is a pretty happy story. But the image of his body curled up on the bottom of the pool and the feel of his body limp in my arms just stuck with me for some reason. Not me but my uncle. He told me this probably 5 years ago when he was very drunk and I haven't heard anything about it before or after. I guess when he was around 7 or 8 some kid who lived on his street had gotten his dad's shotgun and was playing with it in the street with another kid. He pointed it at him and yelled. Freeze. The kid put his hands up jokingly and turned to walk away. But the kid pulled the trigger on him. He said there was a red mist hanging in the air. The kid's head was literally gone. No idea what happened after that though. Right so here is the only throwaway account I have had to make. And yes my story is probably the most fucked here. I was born in South Africa when apartheid was ending and I had a best friend that was older than me, because of all the violence and shit happening there were dead bodies on pretty much every construction site around, I was young. Like this all happened before I was 7 so I didn't understand death much. But after we stumbled upon a few bodies we were bored so we would mess around with them. They were all pretty fresh, the construction people would clear them away eventually, but early in the morning they were there. Pretty soon it was fun to pluck out the eyes and maybe a tooth or just drop big rocks on their heads. Or jump on their stomachs. Or hit them pretty much just mess up the body, I didn't know any better but I knew to keep it between me and my friend. Then we left South Africa and I just pretend like it never happened. Nothing shocks me cause when you were running around collecting eyeballs and popping people's heads when you are young nothing you ever do later compares to the terrible things you did when you just didn't realize how bad what you were doing was. In fact this is the first time I have ever told anyone have fun with it I guess. TLDR. I used to take eyes out of dead bodies in South Africa, yeah. I grew up near San Francisco and for my 5th birthday I wanted to walk the Golden Gate Bridge for the first time. About halfway through. A guy climbed over the guide rail and jumped. I had no idea what it meant at that age but I still remember almost everything about that day. Where we had parked. What I was wearing. The weather. Everything. My grandma ended up picking up his wallet he left for someone to find and turning it into the police. It was still warm from being in his pocket. I saw what happens to the human body when you are burned alive. Suicide bomber detonated his car on a crowded street. Killing several civilians including children. The burned bodies of children curled in fetal positions is probably the worst of a large number of horrible things I've seen humans do to each other. When I was in grade 1. One of my friends was murdered just outside the school in the woods. A week or so later my friends and I were walking through them, like the dumb little shits we were, and found the knife still covered in blood. One of the guys picked it up and took it back to the school. Luckily it was a simple case and the guy was already arrested or we could have messed up the evidence for the case. Comma but needless to say that was what put it in my mind that the murder actually happened. And to more careful. I was working at an ice cream shop when I was in high school and at night in the winter it would only be me and another manager. It was in a pretty nice area. And behind the store there was a giant park that got really creepy at night. That night the manager was a girl, like myself, not too much older than me and when we are closing we have to do trash. We were both pretty small. 
but we could easily do it by ourselves. I decided to take the trash out at night because she was counting money. So I get all the bags out and I walk outside and in the parking lot next to the trash there is a man standing there. He was wearing sweats and there was just this look of hatred on his face that I've never seen in anybody before. I ran back in. Locked the doors to be safe and did some dishes thinking that I could do the trash later. I walked into the main room of the store where there are all the windows and he was standing there in the window. Just looking in. And I will never forget the smile that came on his face when he saw me again. It was the worst mix of evil and complete joy. I can't even describe how his eyes were. They were filled with hate. A hate that I've never seen on anybody before. I ran into the back room with my manager and we hid there for what felt like 2 hours until the police came. By then he was gone. However. He was arrested a few weeks later for brutally raping and killing a female girl. My stature and hair color. When I was in primary school. 6 or 7 year old. While lined up waiting for the bus to arrive. One of my classmates who was tossing a ball up in the air and catching it missed the catch and ran after the ball and was struck by the bus that was coming to pick us up. The front wheel crushed her skull. This happened about 10 feet from me. I saw her brain literally pop out of her head. When I was learning to drive my father would accompany me. There was a football game in town that the rest of my family was at. But I was not going for some reason. On my way home. And into my neighborhood fairly large neighborhood, we went past a plain white van that was off. It turned on and followed us all the way to the road that my house is on. It went to the cul-de-sac. My father took the truck to the game, leaving no vehicles in the parking area and myself alone at home. That white van decided to pull into my driveway so I ran into my father's closet, grabbed the 16 gauge shotgun, two shells, and walked out onto my front porch with it drawn at the van. That van went into reverse and backed out of my driveway faster than it came in. It was a very strange experience and I sat on my porch for a good 30 minutes before going back inside for the night. TL. DR. Plain white van followed me home. This might be the caliber of the other stories here but this freaked me out when I first saw it. So like 4 years ago when I was in high school. I used to exercise in the basement of my house. Which is connected to the garage because my house is built into the side of a hill. Anyway I'm exercising when I hear this loud clicking noise coming from the garage. I had no idea what it was. It was like 10pm and everyone else was either asleep or in their bedroom on the other side of the house. I opened the door to the garage and I can't even comprehend what I was looking at. A bat had gotten its wing stuck to some fly tape and the clicking was its teeth against its bone. It was trying to bite off its arm. The clicking was so loud. Coming back from spring break in Key West, Florida. The group I was traveling with had to stop in North Miami at 2 AM for gas. Keep in mind that we are all blazed out of our skulls for the year's story. We got at the interstate and stopped at some sketchy gas station. Some of the guys went in. The others went to the bathroom on the side of the building. While inside. I got this really weird, uncomfortable feeling. Everyone in the store was making eye contact, but not saying anything. Not a single word. You could hear a pin drop. I gave my friend ahead of me in line some money to pay for my food. I had to get out of that store. Too many creepy vibes. The second I walk out the door a lady starts screaming bloody murder. A huge black guy with no shirt on was beating her through her car window. He was punching her right in the face. As hard as Mike Tyson. She eventually got her car in drive. And started to take off. The crazy guy. Hung on and was drugged down the street for about 50 yards. He eventually pulled the door off its hinges. And the lady drove off. So we are all standing there. Watching this huge crazy guy walk back towards the gas station. Covered in blood. Carrying a car door on his shoulder. We all jumped in the truck and took off. About a mile down the road 15 cop cars flew past us. No one said a word in the truck for the next hour or so. We were all trying to wrap our heads around what we had just seen. So I was one of the first class at UC Merced. Basically they built a brand new campus in the middle of nowhere. 
So the only roads to the school were two. Two lane roads. The kinds of roads that are straight and flat for miles but have no street lights. Me and some friends were driving back to campus late one night after getting some fast food and saw another car, probably about two miles away, coming towards us with their bites on. When the cars saw our lights, they naturally turned their lights back to normal. I wish they never did this. Our two cars are getting closer and closer together. As the car coming towards us is about 10 feet away, both cars are traveling approx 50 miles per hour. Mind you, I see the shadow of a figure directly in front of their car and in a split second we hear this thickening crunch. It happens so fast that you are just in shock. I pull over and we find out the other car full of college kids has just hit some guy who was walking down a pitch black highway a 50 mile per hour. I was at work just over 3 years ago while it was a slow day we still have a few minor things we can do to stay busy on our slower days and this was most certainly slow until now. I was walking around our parking lot to make sure nothing was suspicious, I work at an airport. It's really not uncommon for people to park like assholes and to leave their car for an extended period of time. While walking about the parking lot I noticed a PT Crucier kind of parked funny and all a mess and when I looked inside through the window I saw what appeared to be hair under a blanket. I initially thought it to be a dog but found out it was older woman who had committed suicide. She had been there for 4 months and only her hair nails and some skin remained intact. The proper authorities were contacted but BC of the company I work for I was chosen to remain on scene and watch her being pulled out scoop by scoop and spew onto the ground. When I was less than 10 my police officer father had picked me up from school and was dropping me off at my grandparents while he was on duty. There was a call to a park near where we were. Every time we've talked about this he says he knew he shouldn't have taken me but also knew he didn't have a choice. We pull up to this park in his squad car next to another couple of cops with their guns drawn pointed towards a man sitting on a park bench under a tree facing away from us. My dad gets out and tells me to stay in the car. From my angle I had no idea why they're here for this guy. A negotiator showed up and tried talking to this guy for a few minutes but to no prevail. He pulled the trigger on the double barrel shotgun he had between his legs. Blew his head completely off. I didn't scream. Didn't cry. Just kinda stared shocked. The part that sticks in my mind was what fell from the tree. The brains and blood. Dut. My dad took the rest of the day off. Took me to my favorite place to eat and talked to me about what all his job entailed. TL. DR at 10. I watched a guy blows his head off with a shotgun in a park. Not me. But my dad was a first responder when he was in his 20s for a while. And this incident made him quit. He was called to the scene of a motorcycle accident. The guy on the motorcycle was following a large truck so he couldn't see around it and went to pass him and instantly hit an oncoming car. The guy went flying over the car. And for lack of a better word. Was splattered all over the road. Declared dead on scene. The worst part was that the woman who hit him, it wasn't her fault at all, had two toddlers in the back. They were all fine thankfully but their car was totaled. When the woman's husband arrived he started screaming at her about totaling the car and how expensive it's going to be to get a new one. Insurance. All that stuff. Arsol never asked if his wife or kids were alright. Infuriated my dad. And after seeing the motorcycle guy's body and this jerk yelling at his wife my dad quit the next day. I know that this will get buried. But that's okay. I used to work as a biohazard remediator, I cleaned up after the coroner took all of the body that he could care to take. There are probably a dozen or so stories I could tell. But the first that comes to mind is the time a 40 something single woman died of an apparent heart attack. They didn't find her for a week or so. But she wasn't alone when she died. She lived with three dogs. After a while. The dogs got hungry and ate her. Not all of her. But they drug her all over the house in the process. When I got there. It looked like a slasher movie. There was blood all over the floor and halfway up the walls. There was so much in some places that it seeped under the walls and into the trough that the walls were set into. I still get that sick feeling in my stomach when I think about that. When I was 24 my best friend's girlfriend lost her little brother. 
During the funeral one her great aunt started to shout in the middle of the church about the heat. We all laughed because it was February and the church was freezing cold. Anyway. The lady keeps shouting so some of her relatives took her outside and some friends and I go outside to see if everything was right. It wasn't. As soon as the lady got out of the church she collapsed and fell down. Without a shout or anything. She just fell to the ground. One of the relatives. Who was a doctor called an ambulance and started the CPR but it was useless. I remember going back to the church to talk with my friends and to calm down my friend's GF because she was already devastated for the loss of his little brother. I remember the moment when the doctors and the paramedics stopped. It's weird but the thing I always remember of that moment is the laughter of the father who was in the funeral of his son and just lost his aunt in front of his eyes. That fucking laugh. I know this will never be read. But I've remembered. After reading these comments. Something I've blocked out of my mind for a long time. We were driving home from the lake when I was 10 or so. Suddenly. As we are at the crest of a hill we see a car wreck. It happened a couple of seconds before we were there. We call the police and my mom gets out to try to help. She's a doctor. One person died. She was scrunched in the front of the car where your feet go. My mom gave the person in the passenger car CPR. Or something like that. And he lived. It was crazy seeing a person like that. All scrunched up. Also. Something I've never seen. But heard about and just cannot get it out of my mind. My sister was killed when I was 3. After doing some research of how she was killed I found out she was shot in the back of her head. Her car lit a fire. With her body in it and rolled off a cliff. Getting shot in the back of my head. Being burned. And heights are my biggest fears. So obviously this triggered some extreme mental images. I can image her on her knees. With her long black hair. With a gun pointed to her head. Then someone shoots the gun. When I was 16 some friends and I decided to go for a drive because we had just gotten our licenses. We headed up to a local canyon but on the way we came to the scene of a motorcycle crash seconds after it had happened. A car had apparently run a red light at roughly 50 miles per hour and clipped a motorcycle traveling through the intersection. The driver of the car was just getting out of their car crying frantically. A friend and I walked up to the man lying in the road because we had some minor first aid training. The man was laying on his back and his breathing was slow and visibly difficult. Blood was coming out of his nose, mouth, and ears and I remember hearing a gargling sound when he breathes. Only now does it occur to me that he may have been drowning in his own blood. The fire department was a few blocks away so they arrived before we could do anything. Not that we would have tried. This situation was obviously way more than we could handle. Once the situation was under control of the police and fire department we set out again for our drive up the canyon. We drove for maybe two hours but nobody said a word. We just sat in silence. We found out later that the driver of the car was drunk. The man driving the motorcycle. An off-duty police officer. Died a few hours after being airlifted to a hospital. That gargling sound has stayed with me ever since. I can still hear it and I can still see his face covered in thick coagulating blood that almost looked fake. TL. DR. Showed up seconds after a drunk driver hit a guy driving a motorcycle and watched helplessly as he clung to life in the middle of the road until authorities arrived. I got a call one night from a friend saying she was in the hospital because her boyfriend got drunk and beat the shit out of her. She asked if I could go over and get her cats. The guy had already taken off and wasn't captured yet so I was kind of nervous anyway. When I got there I saw a puddle of blood in the middle of the floor. Bloody handprints on the wall. Blood all over the mattress. Pretty much trails everywhere ending in puddles of blood. The scene freaked me out and my shaky hands grabbing freaked out cats didn't help the situation. By the time I got out of there I was pretty upset. After dropping off the cats I stopped at the hospital and sat with my friend as they finished stitching her face. It was fractured in parts and she was almost unrecognizable. That is a scene I will never forget. Just so no one wonders what happened to her. She pressed charges and moved far away from him and is doing well. Once a tanker truck crashed about a minute in front of us. The whole freeway stopped. He ran into a lot of cars and they all burst into flame. 
No saving the people inside. We were there for 3 or 4 hours while the police and fire department cleaned up. I saw too many dead bodies, all burned and barely recognizable. But recognizable enough to know they were people who died a horrible death. And when I worked in downtown LA. A young man was shot in the head right outside the office I was in. I didn't see him get shot. But we all went out to help as soon as we heard the shot. I worked with a lot of ex-gang members, and I watched him die. None of this is fun. On Labor Day weekend. My sister. Mother and grandmother were all in the car together out on the highway. When we came upon an accident that had just happened. Two girls, in the exact same model car as ours, had gone to pass a semi and been hit head on. They had survived the crash. But the driver's seatbelt had slit her throat. People were just standing there watching her bleed to death on the pavement when my mom jumped out and tried to stop the bleeding and save her. I remember my mom covered in blood screaming at about 20 people why are none of you helping her. And she tried to perform CPR while compressing the wound. Eventually, seriously. Out of fucking nowhere, two nuns in full nun robes and habits walked up and placed their hands on M mom's shoulder and told her to stop. The paramedics had arrived and they took her away. Dead. My mom got back in the car and we kept driving. I'll never forget how we drove up to the scene and how everyone was already there watching this girl thrash and kick on the pavement. Not even trying to help. When I was 10. 5 years ago, my best friend and I used to go airsofting. Across the street from my house was a pond and on the other side of the pond were some railroad tracks. We'd follow them about 4 miles and slide down a hill to a wooded area. You could tell this place had been inhabited once. Old rusty refrigerators and oil drums laid all around. If you can picture a Call of Duty like scene where it seems like it's old and nuked. That's what it felt like walking around in there. It was really cool. There was a trench that ran perpendicular to the way we'd play. If you followed the trench down farther you'd hit water and the railroad tracks above turn into a bridge. Huge wooden beams crisscrossed each other like a checkerboard on the bridge. One day we had gone to play some capture the flag. It was difficult to climb back up the hill after we'd gone down so we decided to see if it was less steep on the other side of the bridge. We're walking along the bridge. Watching our step. There's probably a good foot in between the squares created between the crisscross. Comma my friend had a lot more balls than I and decided that he would hop along them to cross. Always trying to be a crowd pleaser. He makes it about halfway. Right over the trench and water. And right as I warn him to be careful. He looks back. Not paying attention. His foot catches the edge of one of the beams. I can hear his ankle snap and it slides out of the beam. I stop and stare in horror as my friend plunges into the abyss below. The water's kinda deep. But shallow enough that he died on impact. I've never ran faster or harder in my life. I was working at a restaurant in my hometown. The restaurant was on the corner of this really sharp curve in the road. One of the dining rooms used to be a porch in an earlier form of the building. But had since been converted in a dining room with a large window overlooking this curve. I was in there taking some orders when a guy on a motorcycle came around the curve too fast and crashed into the ditch. I ran out there and when I got to the motorcycle he wasn't anywhere to be found. This was in the late evening so it was a bit hard to see. I searched the woods a little farther up the road and found him. Upside down in the brush. Already dead from a broken neck. The worst part was he had on full riding gear. Helmet and all. As safe as he could be. I had to pull him out of the woods myself before the paramedics got there. Just to put him in a more dignified position than hanging upside down in some brush. I hardly slept for two weeks. When I was 10. My family found out my dad had cancer. After the operation some things went wrong. And he was in IQ for a while. One of the days we were visiting. The man across the hall, I don't know remember what he was in for, had either a heart attack or a stroke. And I watched him collapse. The next day when we went back to see dad. We found out the man had passed away. Doesn't bother me much because I was 10. And while I understood what happened. I didn't know him. It bothered me more than though. Nothing super gore related. But definitely scarred me. And will probably be burned into my head forever. 
I'm 20 now, my younger sister was shot in the back of the head a few months ago. Somehow survived. The doctors said there was literally no reason for her to be alive, and after hearing the news rushing back from school. The whole day seems like a blur. I got off the elevator in the IQ prepared to see a few close family friends. And was greeted by almost 50 people. Most of which were sobbing. Or had been. The doors opened for us to go back to the room from the waiting room and she was barely conscious. With eyes everywhere. A breathing tube and a drain in her head. I couldn't even cry.